All right. Uh, all right. Well, I'm just gonna just gonna start because I'm I'm also winging it because <laughs> I could I could think of two games with viruses. Yeah. So. See, that was the challenge. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, might as well just start it here anyway. Um, yeah. <laughs> by the way, bleepity bleep. There you go. Yeah. There it is. First two in uh, the jar. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, guys. Welcome to Microtransgressions. This is the Square Pegs uh, podcast. I am Jay. You guys know me from the channel. With me is Corey. Uh, who you may know from the Cretans Guild, uh, and if you don't, you'll become infinitely familiar with him, uh, <laughs> as he is an infamous mind. So, uh, you'll become infinitely, intimately familiar with my infamy. There it is. I like that. I like that. That's so, right. Take my uh, wordplay. There's a whole lot kind of going on right now. Uh, yes. Out there in the world. <laughs> All things um, dank and germy and infectious. Yeah, so uh, what better way than to uh, survive quarantine and to pass some time <laughs> uh, than by talking about video games that have Woo! viruses in them. Dude, okay, I know that we were we were talking about the show being something a little bit different. I mean, having to do with the viruses and the pandemic and such. What a week for releases. Dude. It's been sick. Yeah. <laughs> not to yeah, be cute. So, not to so be we, cute. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Do Doom came out today uh, mm -hmm. because GameStop released it early, and, even and, though there's a whole myriad of other things that they've done today that are, are not not just cool. Yeah, yeah. They're making some wow. weird moves today. <laughs> weird, weird is being very nice about it. Yeah, charitable. Uh, I know, but still, maybe they, they were like, "All right, we released Doom Eternal early. Let's get the rest of it out now." <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, right, we've got a little bit of goodwill. Let's defy authority now. Oh Let's my God, the... Doom is out early. We yeah, Doom is out early, and so is this. <laughs> That's right. Catch it. Get the buckets out. <laughs> yeah. So so what else have we had? Uh, tomorrow is Animal Crossing. Yeah. Horns uh, up. Which I am excited to have that delivered right to my doorstep. Uh, yeah. I th I yeah. made a boo boo and still uh, got that pickup because I'm a doofus. Mm. Whoops. Yeah. Well, at least Where'd I get you? to go. But uh huh. Where'd you order it from? Uh, it was Best Buy, like you suggested. I got. I went ahead and um. <laughs> got because I'm, I'm because I'm a consumer whore. I went ahead and got the pro, the uh, pre-order bonus too with the plush bag of bells. So did we? Cause, yeah. But unfortunately, um, uh, I ordered it to be shipped to the uh, Sanford store, so it's going to be a little bit of a drive tomorrow. <laughs> a little bit of a drive, but I get to go by Andy's. It levels hey. out a bit. Yeah. All right. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I kind of uh, saw the writing on the wall here in, in Michigan mm -hmm. last week when I was looking at stuff because it was like, hey, we're going to, you know, we're going to shut down schools. And I was like, well, that <laughs> probably means everything else is going to be close to being shutting down, too. So let's <laughs> let's switch that to a delivery. <laughs> yeah, well, most most of us. Um, now, I think Best Buy is actually still going to be open because for the most part, uh, a lot of our businesses are in in at least partial operation, even stuff that shouldn't be. Except for Disney, which is closed. <laughs> well, I'm glad Disney's yeah, closed. Yeah, thank like, goodness, there, man. It was... There, it was there, there's, there's been some stuff I've seen online, because <clears> I follow <throat> a lot of Disney, uh, you know, uh, I guess influencers, for lack of a better term. Oh, yeah. Um, do you, hey, do you follow Skipper Bob? I do. Skipper Bob is awesome. He's you also follow a Skipper Bob. Pretty great channel he runs, yeah. He, he does, and the poor poor guy's just having a nervous breakdown right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, be sure to check out his YouTube channel and uh, look at uh, him try to prank a pug. It's adorable and sad. Yeah. Because uh, the pug is deaf. Yeah, it's pretty much a vault training uh, vault training guess, sequence in, in transit. I was going to say spoilers, but that's the title of the video, so it's not really no. too much of a spoiler. No, you're in safe harbor. Feel free. Yeah. <laughs> and honestly, the video is 43 seconds long, so if you're spoiled by that, I'm sorry. Um, um, <laughs> oh, mild spoilers. It was uh, it was because of Bob's uh, that video that uh, I finally got a TikTok, not to like tip my hand too much, uh, but uh, hopefully I'll be like putting some stuff up soon and then be, de be deciding in about a week or so if it's a waste of time who knows awesome i look forward to it uh i, I demand a link yes um so so we had we, we've got animal crossing we've got doom eternal we've got uh, no, exit ML the effing dungeon drop. exit the dungeon <laughs> got a shadow drop or yeah. enter the yeah exit the dungeon exit uh, right. out of nowhere mm -hmm. uh even though it was already on apple arcade but it's now on the switch which is awesome uh and i can't wait to play it mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um but you know priorities yeah, I'm gonna have to wait to order that until you know everyone's working in the house again. So of course. Uh, and what else came out? Oh, uh, MLB The Show 20 came out this week, which I'm excited to get. Yeah. Um, because I've been playing uh, the show now for about five years. <laughs> uh, wow, so, really? 
Oh, I love that series. It's a great uh-huh. game. Great game. But but, um, but the one game, right? No, no, no. I it's um, I update every other year. Oh, okay, okay. I so, was gonna but, ask if it was like a Tib thing, then it would be iterative. No, it, it's so. it's definitely it's definitely an iterative game. I mean, uh-huh. they, they release they release yearly, but I I tend to update every other year. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I think I did I did 2015, 2017, and then twenty nineteen. But this year there's some changes that I'm interested in. So oh, so you like reverse Star I, Trek those numbers? <laughs> yeah. If I don't get it. I'll live because it's supposed to come out on the Switch next year, and I would rather have it portably. So, yep, yeah, Port- port- portablish. Yeah, portablish. Portablized. <laughs> surprise. Uh, oh my god, the drink is starting to work. Nice. Uh, what, what what are you drinking tonight? Uh, in uh, in keeping with the uh, the, I was gonna say the tidings of the season. Yes, this enormous <laughs> death cloud that we have hovering over every major continent on this planet. I guess you could call that tidings. Um. I was looking for like medically themed cocktails, uh, and most of those were unfortunately involving a lot of stuff that I don't have. Um, you know, like your pain, painkillers, bloody berries. Uh, there was one called a Saint Dr- Saint James Infirmary that I really want to make, um, but I didn't have any of the stuff for it. It needed like pernod and whatnot. Eh. Ah, yes. Yeah, I made something called Red Dawn. Ooh. Yes. So Which, you're gonna fight some Russians? Uh, that's what I, I was gonna say. It's a great <laughs> dual purpose drink because of uh, a, you know. Viruses, sure. okay, yeah. illness, yeah. vomit, things like that. Pleasant thoughts, all of them. B, if the US, if USSR ever becomes a major uh, global superpower again, uh, we won't be really celebrating that. <laughs> <laughs> but we can drink to our assumed survival, I guess. Sure, yeah. <laughs> and to the coming of the new Cold War. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, you should look up the penicillin and uh, see if you have the stuff to make that drink. The penicillin, no kidding. Yeah. I kind of want to do that right now, actually. Mind it's, if I take a second? No, oh, no go, by, go by all means. No, I'll, right. uh, while you're looking it up, I'll walk you through it. It's got, uh, it's got lemon juice, uh-huh. uh, two different types of scotch, uh, mm-hmm. and ginger syrup. And uh, there's probably some other stuff in there, too, that I'm not remembering. Oh, but it is, hey, it is you know what? Chicken butt. Uh, plus. <laughs> plus that chicken butt. Um, there was, what did I read here? Oh, it was a recipe called amoxicillin. Um, that is basically the same thing, but it uses tequila. Oh, okay. okay. Instead of uh, instead of what you're describing there. So this one in particular is uh, uses a uh, milagro silver, lemon, uh, ginger, honey, peppercorn syrup, which don't have any of that stuff, <laughs> and uh, uh, El Silencio Mezcal Float, which I definitely don't have, and probably won't, being that I don't live in a major city. Sure. So yeah, that one's uh, that one is that one, it looks good, it sounds good, but it's probably gonna have to like sit on the wayside for a little bit. Yeah, the the penicillin is a is a is a scotch base with a with a peat scotch float. Mm-hmm. So it's it's a it's a hefty drink. There's there's that a lot happening there. <laughs> sounds like hot stuff. <laughs> yeah. Ugh. All right. Well, maybe next time. Maybe next time we'll be a little bit looser for this whole thing. <laughs> um. So the idea behind this one show was that uh we were gonna do viruses, you know, viral yeah. themed games and stuff, and uh. What, but it, when, when you lay that out for someone to ponder, what's the first thing that they're going to either, you know, what's the thing, what's the first thing that's going to get blurted out? Uh, either Pandemic or Last of Us. Pandemic or Last of Us, which is A, a video game adaptation of a board game, mm-hmm. or if you were ahead of the curve a little bit, you would have gotten, um, what was the one, Plague Inc., I think? Yeah, yep. Which the one is that was on iOS. Yeah. yeah, for a long time, and then <laughs> the Pandemic people were like, why are we not getting money off of this? Exactly. It's our game. <laughs> um, <laughs> and on the other side of the coin, you're going to have like zombies or zombie like uh, settings. Yeah. Zombie because, apocalypse. Stuff. Because everything that, you know, you, you look at Last of Us and everything ties into that. You got Resident Evil. Right? Mm-hmm. It's the T virus. No, it's zombies. Mm-hmm. Right. Stop it's, it. Right. And it's, it's always a contagion that causes the zombie scourge to begin with. But, yeah. you know, being that the contagion is never like fully defined or uh, even crystallized. Uh, just bringing zombies into it is it seems like a safe way to you know present a contagion or a mass panic or something well know? yeah it, it puts a it puts a face on the enemy you know mm-hmm. it, it's it, it's uh it's a thing to look at so you can actually say oh yeah they're the bad guy yeah and you, therefore you can mow them down with impunity and not feel bad which honestly if you're uh, used to shooters anyway is something that uh, you go ahead and just do anyway so yeah. I don't know um but but there are very few virus-themed uh, games or contagion-themed games, you know, yeah. that aren't either like, "Hey, uh, don't f with Madagascar," or "Blow <laughs> all these guys away because they're already dead." Yeah, right. Yeah. So, so 
there there was there's a couple we came up with um mm-hmm. and, and the first one i want to talk about is one that's actually just got into the e-shop mm-hmm. uh and it's called the complex yeah you uh, mentioned that all right yeah so it's it's i call it a game it's very loosely it's it's a it's a choose your own adventure uh, right. It's it's an interactive movie. Uh, it mm-hmm. stars uh, Michelle Milet, who's in Letterkenny, and I'm sure you guys are tired of me talking about it, but I really <laughs> don't care at this point. But it's a Canadian. It's a Canadian. Um, <laughs> yeah. <Any>, well, like... <laughs> no, that's okay. There's gonna be a lot of bleeps right there. It's all right. Don't worry about it. Um, <laughs> this is so off brand. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, so it's it's a uh, it's a interactive interactive movie about uh-huh. uh, a contagion that opens up in a lab. Mm-hmm. Uh, it looks really interesting, you know. It's like I, it's it's a it's a different type of a visual novel. And visual novels can be cool. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. If if um, well, aside from a visual novels being cool, because uh, that was something that I had just started getting into in like the last couple of years. Um, nights alone lead to many fell paths, but uh, I try to keep. I try to play most of the better ones if it's any sort of consolation to anybody. But uh, here's the thing about uh, the complex, at least from what I've seen. It's not just a visual novel, but it is uh, kind of a throwback to your uh, night trapses and your double switches and your even your Tex Murphys. Very when you think much about so. it. Yeah. So it's not just that, but it's also big time FMV hijinks. Yep. And uh, I wanted to kind of like throw this out there too. Um, Letter Kenny is a Canadian show, right? Very much so, eh? Well, you know what? You know where you can find a lot of uh, pretty talented actors for on the cheap ski. The Canadians. Is is Canada? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's that's the funniest thing because you'll see like um, uh, I I had gotten into like a uh, small budget horror movies uh, in recent years, and there's a lot of go between with the casts in them, and you'll see a bunch of cast of those casts or those players. In the Arrowverse shows. Oh yeah, and supernatural. All over the place. And, like, and if supernatural. It, if it's filmed in Vancouver, they're there. Yep. Yeah. Like, the but, the lead from Letterkenny, Jared Kiso, has been on Supernatural. Uh-huh. I think he was in an episode of Smallville or something like that. Where I'm, <laughs> where I'm just like, yeah, I don't care. I, I'm all right with it. It's awesome. <laughs> like I'm just I'm, I'm waiting for uh, for Squirrely Dan to show up on Flash next year as you know, yeah. uh, uh, Big Sur or something like that. <laughs> just, <laughs> actually, I think Goldberg was Bill Sur. Or Big Sur. Big Sur, yeah. Bill, they, they... I'm Bill Sir, Big Sur's father. <laughs> Billiam Goldberg, as I believe you. Yeah. <laughs> what he prefers to be called. That's his preferred nomenclature. Are you sure you don't mean William? I mean Billiam. It's that, no, Bill is short for Billiam. Yes. You know, you mean William. I do not. I do not. I mean Billiam. <laughs> that makes no sense. Why would I transpose the B in a W? That's very strange. Huh. Americans, dude, you're from Georgia. <laughs> Gilbert is just on the sidelines, going, Mm-mm, "That ain't right." <laughs> Gilbert's pulling a Lee Trevino. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, well, this is going wonderfully oh, to plan. Boy, um, <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is very much on brand for our types of podcasts. Yeah, uh, <laughs> pretty much. Derailers eat your heart out. We're going to run this continent. Um, All right. So, uh, so, so, yeah, there's a lot of Canadian go between with the casts and such. Yeah. yeah. Um, Have you started watching Letterkenny yet? Or, no, we, we talked about that. You need to, you yeah, need to get a Hulu subscription. Hulu, okay. Hulu's kind of on the back burner at the moment, yeah. as is many other things. I need to take care of that for you. I can take care of that for you. Oh, you can you can take care of it for me, huh? Yeah, I can I can get that sorted for you. Yes. We will get you watching the Letterkenny. I mean, you've got nothing but time right now. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and these seasons are like. At the most, eight episodes. You're going to burn through the show in a day if you really want to. Oh, yeah. So they produce them a lot like uh, British television. Very much so. Very much so. Yeah. See, that's why Peep Show was such an easy watch. It was easily six episodes at 20 minutes each. Yeah. Or 27. At least that. So, all right. Well, I'll get on that homework as soon as I have the materials. Promise, teacher. Cool. Um, so that left us with the problem to come up with uh, uh, disease-themed games that uh, that aren't all shooty and, you know, the mm-hmm. stuff that we had previously described. Um, Complex is one of them. So we we're talking FMVs. We've got we've got a pretty niche hat thrown into the ring, which is super cool. Um, and the idea between or the idea behind the game is that uh, you're trying to you're trying to stop a contagion from occurring um, within the setting that it is placed. Mm-hmm. Uh, like I said, I only saw one trailer. Um, so I was thinking about um, some other stuff at the same time as that. I, I, um, Complex was a good pick. Um, another one I was thinking about was uh, was Dishonored. Uh, oh, Dishonored yeah. was a uh, was a stealthy actiony sort of a game that came out in 2012, steampunk themed. So you know I was all up in those guts. Um, and 
what happens is that throughout the course of the game, now, plagues or plague uh, carriers don't tie directly in with the uh, game's mechanics, but rather, um, the conditions of the conditions of the setting in which you are begin to change depending upon the actions that you take throughout the game. Okay. So, rats carry the plague. Now, technically, fleas carry the plague, and fleas bite the rats. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stand up for my, uh, for my rodent brethren. <laughs> um, and if you want some more elucidation upon that point, watch the short film that comes packaged with Ratatouille. Uh, anyway, so <laughs> if you, uh, if you cause a lot of chaos and you get up to a whole lot of murdering and assassinating then uh, more black rats will begin to appear, and the further uh, the city of Dunwall will begin to fall into chaos. Um, rats become uh, more of a pertinent obstacle throughout your, uh, throughout your quests and your missions and stuff, so it is to your advantage to not, you know, go around, you know, slashing people's throats in broad daylight in front of a crowd of tens. Um, <laughs> also, <laughs> also, they'll see you. There are dozens <laughs> of us. Dozens! <laughs> <laughs> oh, you want to play the dozens? No, 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 we're not doing it. We're not doing this. <laughs> so that was one I was going to throw out there as well. And kind of like by extension, uh, extension, by extension, uh, the rats that appear throughout the course of uh, play in um, Layers of Fear are similar. But of course, because there's no real dying in that game, they, uh, you know, they kind of play a different part. But that's how that's how disease manifests with our rodents. It kind of sucks that rodents, are, that rats have become like a shorthand for, you know, nastiness. Yeah, it does, because rats are awesome. Mm -hmm. um, so the the next one I wanted to talk about e is... Except for Radigan, he's a like, get out of here! Yeah, I don't like Ble <laughs> Bad guy. Bad guy, that Radigan. Great voice actor. What yes, nice. very much so. Uh -huh. uh, the next one I want to talk about is uh, Plague Tale Innocence, uh, which is Ooh, yes. a current gen release. Uh -huh. uh, which is pretty cool. So you are playing as a girl who is trying to find relief for your brother who is infected. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. And again, rats. You know, there, there's there's rats everywhere. Oh man! <laughs> um, but it, wow. it looks really neat. Like I haven't played it yet. I've got it installed on the Xbox, but I haven't had a chance to look at it yet. Um, but the trailers look amazing. Like mm -hmm. it's it's a visually stunning game. The the use of light and shadow in it is really cool. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, that 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 was one that uh, piqued my interest. To say so it's least. it's uh, when I when I looked at that, um, I I think I caught a glimpse of it. Was it the Switch or? I think it was on Switch. Yeah. Um, no, it's pr it's probably on PC too. I don't know. I, I could have been just like knocking one back at me, like ha, Plague Tale. <laughs> I, I don't get it. Um, <laughs> no, I do. It looks it looks great, but uh, it also looks like it's very uh, story oriented and narratively driven. Yep. Yeah. Um, I was looking at one, um, and this is a bit of a, this is a bit of a weird one because uh, this, this, I think it's, I think this game producer is kind of recent, and the stuff that they put out is like visually, I wouldn't use the word stunning. I might use the word aggressive though. Okay. We'll go with, we'll go with visually aggressive. Uh, and what I was looking at is called Plague Road, and this one is definitely on the Switch because it is almost permanently on sale at 99 cents. Oh, nice. Yeah. Now, <laughs> on Steam, it's 20 bucks. So, I assume that there's like, uh, I assume there's a bit more of a, a, a beefy experience to be had there, uh, if you're pricing it up that high. But for, there's some there's some kind of a weird like market dynamic that happens with the Switch. We're all we're all like intimately familiar with uh, Steam sales. I'm pretty sure. Oh yeah, it's part of the culture now, right? Yeah. Um, Switch has sales too. Most of the time, they're a bit more reasonable than Steam sales are. They'll be like, uh, let's say that there's a twenty dollar game. They'll knock it down to like fourteen for a week. Or something yep. like that, you know? But every once in a while, there, there'll be a game that will be, like, permanently stuck at five cents. And it'll retail for $29.99. Yep. <laughs> it, it really makes you wonder, like, what's going on here? Like, who, who, yeah. who made the call to put it at that initial price? Like... It's a it's a strange uh, it's a it's a, a strange occurrence, like like I don't want to think that this is it, but it's almost as if the dev is like, geez, we've been moving none of this on Switch, but we gotta have traffic or something. So what are we gonna do? All right, we just need to get it moved out, but we can't put it up there for free because all of a sudden it's gonna be in another income bracket. So, uh, coke and a handshake, I guess. I don't know. So one of the interesting things behind that is one of the uh -huh. reasons that devs put those games on sale for that cheap is because yeah, yeah. there's no rating system on the Switch eShop. No so, kidding. So I people never can that. put can put like just complete dog wow games mm -hmm. up for five cents and get people to bite on it. 
and putting it on five cents moves it to the top of the on sale list. <laughs> so it gets eyes on it's real shady. But, yeah, you know. a little bit. Like I've gotten some damn good games off of that system for like twenty like a quarter. Uh, mm-hmm. a quarter of a dollar. A dollar is like I don't know, guys. You better be really good. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, there's some stuff where I'm like, okay, no, this is five cents. I'm not spending five cents. I know that's going to be terrible. But like a buck, a buck makes me go, well. <laughs> I know. We're so. Let me watch the video again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to make sure you're exactly what I'm looking for <laughs> at this steep dollar. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> Price tag. Um, so Plague Road is uh, one of those things. Um, and unsurprisingly, it's a part of a franchise called uh, the Plague Universe, which uh, doesn't seem oh. to be too much of a pleasant place to live. Um, no. I don't know <laughs> we that. We call it the Milkshake Universe. At least trick people into going. I know. It's <laughs> <laughs> Make, sell it a little bit. Come on. I mean, I got to have a reason to drop at least a cent on this game for Pete's sake. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm going to send a link to the Steam page for you so you can see exactly what it looks like. And the visuals for it lie somewhere between, um, yeah, I don't know what to say. Like George Cruikshank and an Amon Amarth album cover. Wow. You see this? It's bonkers. This, okay, so this looks like someone at Image and Form. Uh-huh got really high yeah. yes and, and used used the steam world quest engine uh-huh. for ill purposes yeah now i normally i normally kind of balk at that uh, at that cliche about like artists being high all the time and der- deriving their uh, artistic like sensibilities and such from uh, artificial uh, means but in this case it's so effing random it's just, it's yeah. just it's everywhere i mean good good for the artist the palettes are at least still consistent, and there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of um, harmony. <laughs> oh yeah, going on, but that's way underneath the sheets. And what oh, yeah. you're seeing on top here is, I feel like now this is going to be a bit of a caustic way to describe this, uh, but I feel like have a rotten day. And you're probably gonna have to bleep that entire thing out. So let me come up with a better uh, <laughs> a better comparison. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's redo that bit. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> I, I feel I feel like uh, I feel like you're being mugged here. <laughs> yeah, it's your it's, senses are being mugged. It's yes. visual assault. Like mm-hmm. it, it's there's so much happening. Yeah, and I can't call it ugly, but it's very distinctive. And no, a lot of people and a lot not, of people will be like, "Ooh, you know." <laughs> it's it's not ugly at all. It's just mm-hmm. it's wow. There's a lot happening there. Yeah. So from the looks of it, it looks like a sort of a turn-based thing. And from the description, because I actually haven't even seen the trailer for it, I swear, um, all I know of this game is the thumbnail that keeps popping up on the feed <laughs> and me being like, you know what, maybe today's the day. And then I remember that I'm like playing a half a dozen other things. Yeah. Um, uh, so the, around, et- the eternal, the eternal the, problem of the modern gamer. Uh, yes. Uh, life is indefinitely too hard and we are so oppressed. Yes. Oppressed by choice. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> or oppressed from choice, rather. Uh, let me see. Uh, set uh, around a city being consumed from within by a disease, a plague, if you will. Plague Road tells a story of a lone doctor who once abandoned their home and now returns to learn the fate of those they left behind. So, rescue survivors choose whether to use them as traveling companions or improve the doctor's farm and gain access to new abilities. So, there's some crafting implied there. Sure. Um, how your farm progresses depends upon where you assign survivors to work. To be honest with you, you know what I'd love to see is this. But given a harvest moon coat of paint. <laughs> oh man, that'd be great. <laughs> that'd be pimp. Oh my goodness. So that was another one that leapt out at me, uh, as far as plagues were concerned. Uh, All right. Well, I'm gonna. I've got one more I want to talk about, and then I think we're gonna wrap things up because we are getting a little bit long in the tooth here. We're at 25 mm-hmm. minutes right now, but uh, shoot. All right. There, there's one very obvious one that both you and I have missed entirely. Mm-hmm. From a genre, not typical for for this type of subject. Oh, I hope you're going into this topic because I actually wanted to talk about something in particular. Go ahead. I want to talk about Dr. Mario. <laughs> yes! Awesome! All Is right. that what you were going to talk about? That's exactly what I was going to talk Fantastic. about. Fantastic. All right. All right. You get your... All right. Uh, okay. Fragment yourself out first. Yep. yep, I, yep. Want to, I, want, I want to absorb it and then... Uh, then we'll continue. Yeah. So Dr. Mario is uh, obviously it's a puzzle game. Uh, it's from Nintendo stars, Mario and some uh, jerk viruses. Mm. Uh, and the entire point of the game is to eliminate the viruses, drop some pills on them. They cry, they disappear. It's yep. It's as simple as it gets. There's nothing 
complex about the design of the game. Nope. It was just Nintendo trying to uh, leap off of uh, uh, the money that Tetris had brought them. Yep. They're like, That's... we got to keep this cash cow going. What are we going to do? Yep. I guess make something new? <laughs> oh my god, what do the moms like to play? They like puzzle games. Quick, make Dr. Mario. <laughs> yeah. well, remember, at the time, moms weren't touching video games. They that's, were telling their true. kids not to touch them. That's true, that's true. But um, dad, dads were. Dads were all about it, yeah. <laughs> and, and moving the <laughs> controllers around like this as they, as they played. <laughs> Are you calling my dad out? <laughs> I'm calling every dad out. Every dad out? Yeah. Because he did exactly. He only bought, see, if it weren't for my dad, I would never have had a PS1. But he bought that PS1 for one particular reason. That's to, Yeah, to signal <laughs> to signal the cars into the pit in motion a good <laughs> eight years before the Wii was even a concept. So <laughs> I'm rolling down the road and I'm flirting with a disaster. <laughs> oh my god. I will never forget playing that at your house. <laughs> And my dad's like, it's got Molly Hatchet. <laughs> <laughs> so, I knew this is where I was meant to be. Anyway. So, so I, I love Dr. Mario. I, Dr. Mario. I, I, had, uh, I had a sealed NES copy of it. Mm -hmm. um, I found a copy of it at an estate sale for like a yeah. dollar uh, on a the score. Game Boy. And I was like, yeah, I'll buy that. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I, I was playing that probably two weeks ago. So. And the, oh, you, you were still playing it? Yeah, oh yeah, I still play it every once in a while. Nice. You're pulling up on the classic, I assume. No, on, on my Game Boy. My Game Boy uh, SP. My GBA SP. Oh, oh you, you still have the original cartridge. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. That, wow. Uh, you know what? Good for you, too. Mazel tov. Um, I, the, amount of like, uh, the amount of like actual fresh games that I had gotten from way back then that I still have on me or maybe... Well, actually, they're all Game Boy games. So, yeah. I guess that kind of, uh, that kind of, that's kind of the trope. Um, did you know, um, I don't know, I don't know if you've heard this, we probably have, I don't know. Um, but, uh, Dr. Mario, they actually explain in the Japanese version what exactly he is a doctor of. No. He's a veterinarian. Huh? When you finish the game, when you finish the game, there is a cinematic that shows that he's been like, uh, he's been like treating a dog the entire time. I'm okay with that. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. I am I'm glad glad he's not. I guess eating them. I don't know, because <laughs> because uh, I hear that dogs uh, dogs uh, pair uh, quite well with the carbonara. Ah, hey, Ju it's my team. Just what I've heard. Just what I've heard. But there's one cooler thing about Dr. Mario that I wanted to touch upon uh, before we get the hell out of here. What's um, that? Is that um, when I was like trying to sort through uh, like all these categories of games and stuff to try to like dig up anything that's uh, that's uh, plague flavored. Um, there was one category that seemed to kind of have like more of uh, more traction with that I, with that topic or that topicality than like uh, than like any other game. And it was it was puzzle games, because I believe Dr. Mario kind of kickstarted a um, kind of a reliant theme for people that don't really uh, that are kind of like trying to get into a particular market. Like uh, the first one that popped up was uh, was a DS uh, puzzle game called Poochie Poochie Virus, which. Uh, don't know what the name really means. Um, you can look it up for yourself at your risk. But sure. uh, essentially, it was on the DS, so it used the touchscreen. And what you had to do was uh, draw a, like a quarantine border. Bound, it's viruses are falling from the from the top. You have to draw a quarantine border around similarly colored uh, bacteria to make them disappear. Um, That's clever. And the thing is that I should have remembered this game because when I played it, I enjoyed the hell out of it. And it was probably one of like the funniest written games that was available on the DS at that point. It was just, it was just kind of weird. Let me, let me see if you remember this. There was this odd um, artisanship zone on the DS, or at least with DS localizations, where games would not only come over like fully translated, or if they would, they were fully translated, but they were also written disturbingly well. Oh yeah. And I remember the first one of those was Phoenix Wright. Yep. Yeah, and uh, afterwards I can name off a couple of others like um, Elite Beat Agents. Elite Beat Agents was effing great. Yep. Uh, Tokyo Beatdown was hilarious, mm -hmm. um, and uh, Poochie Poochie Virus, which just happened to have really hilarious dialogue. So there was that one, and then I thought of another one that uh, 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 during like the uh, the uh, blossoming of the indie scene, uh, Fifth Cell, who did uh, Locks Quest and Scribble Knots, they actually did a browser-based game called DNA. Really. Where you would have to try to like um, quarant not quarantine, but um, uh, segregate uh, different 
colored strands of bacteria, but because the theme uh, ties into the gameplay, DNA chains, they had to be chains or you wouldn't progress at all. Huh. Uh huh. Yeah. That's clever. Uh, I tried looking forward to the other day because uh, their website is still up. Unfortunately, it is dedicated solely to their current mobile game offering. Uh, and I forgot what that was called. But yeah, uh, yeah it, was, it was pretty cool. So puzzle games, just riddled with germs. <laughs> Wear gloves next time you play. All right. Uh, that stuff. That, that, uh, that's going to do it for the first episode of Microtransgressions. Um, <laughs> we are uh, probably going to be back next week sometime, I would say. Um, we'll talk about something else. It would else. be. We're going to live through it all. Don't worry. Yeah, it, it's, <laughs> it's, it's not going to be virus related next time. We'll, we'll talk uh-huh. something else. Uh, if there's anything you guys want to talk about, let yes. us know. We'll do apocalypse themed games next week. <laughs> and there's plenty of those to pick from. Plenty of those to pick from. Um, and, and we'll be doing it from an undisclosed location. <laughs> we'll do it from the soundproof booth. <laughs> yes. Nowhere near Fury Road. Uh, <laughs> at all. Uh, but until next time, guys, uh, have fun, play more games, and uh, by all means, wash your hands and stay safe. <laughs> Please do that last thing. Yes, very much. Especially if I'm, like, letting you borrow my controller. <laughs> Pete's sake. Pass them sticks, but wash your hands first. <laughs>